Fabric Path is an awesome new technology which allows for the elimination of spanning tree protocol within a particular data center. Awesome, so we'll use intermediate system to intermediate system, a layer two variation, and we'll have routing inside our switched fabric so that we can easily move traffic over multiple links throughout the switched infrastructure without all the convergence delay of spanning tree protocol. But what typically goes wrong in a fabric path environment and what commands can you utilize in order to verify your fabric path? Well, we're going to learn that in this particular micro nugget. This is a slice out of my data center unified fabric troubleshooting course here at CBT Nuggets. So before I get into some of the commands that you would use when troubleshooting common issues with spanning tree protocol, let's just go over some of the really most common problems. They're very simple for you to sort out with fabric path. One of the things that could happen is you, you go to enable the feature and you can't. This is when you want to use show feature set to ensure that the feature set for fabric path functionality is indeed installed and enabled. So that show feature hyphen set that you would want to use at the command line. Another thing that can happen, of course, is that you are on a temporary trial for the Fabric Path functionality. You get 120 days, for instance, under your particular license. Now, you will be getting a system message every day, once a day, telling you, all right, you've got 119 days left to have fun with Fabric Path. All right, you've got 62 days left, etc. You can use show license usage to ensure that your temporary utilization of fabric path is not about to expire. What if your interface won't take the fabric path commands? Well, maybe you're on an M series module. So watch out. Remember, this is going to be module specific. For instance, the F series would be required in order to take advantage of fabric path functionality. What if you look at your edge device and you notice that the interface that is connecting to those classical Ethernet VLANs is in a blocking state, a spanning tree protocol blocking state. Yikes. What happened? Well, sure enough, superior BPDUs were coming in from your classic spanning tree environment or your rapid spanning tree environment for that matter. So remember, we need to go in and set the edge device as the root. To troubleshoot this, we would obviously go into our spanning tree protocol environment and we would find out who is trying to take over as the root and we would correct that. Also verify that you have set your edge device to be the root by setting it to the lowest possible priority. Finally, if you cannot switch layer two traffic across your Cisco Fabric Path network, the most likely issue is that you have failed to configure the correct VLANs for Fabric Path functionality. So we have show Fabric Path topology VLAN active. This command can really help us out by showing us exactly what VLANs are active for our particular Fabric Path environment. So in order to be a Fabric Path troubleshooter, a bona fide Fabric Path troubleshooter, we want to be able to do four things. We want to be able to verify basic parameters, obviously quite simple, examine the Fabric Path MAC address table. We want to examine the Fabric Path routing table. And if you are indeed combining the functionality of virtual port channels with Fabric Path, you need to be able to verify virtual port channel plus. So four big commands that I'm going to utilize in order to verify basic Cisco Fabric Path settings. Two are shown here, and I'll show you the other two in a moment. So we mentioned it earlier, show feature set. Notice I can see that Fabric Path feature sets been installed and enabled. Also, here we can see we have the FEX feature set installed, 
but it is disabled. That's unrelated to our discussion of Fabric Path right now. Just wanted to show you the show feature set command and how we would easily be able to verify Fabric Path is installed and enabled. Then we have the show feature set services Fabric Path, and it comprises three services. Notice if everything is normal, we have our unicast layer two routing information base, our dynamic resource allocation protocol, and ISIS Fabric Path itself. And then it is very simple to verify your Fabric Path switch IDs. Remember, they can be created dynamically or statically on the devices. And the asterisk is going to indicate your particular system that you're running this command on in your infrastructure. So notice, very simple to verify the switch and system IDs of our Fabric Path infrastructure. That's show Fabric Path switch hyphen ID. Then verify our VLANs, critically important since we know if we haven't included them in the Fabric Path VLAN list, we're not going to have proper layer two forwarding across the Fabric Path cloud. Show Fabric Path topology VLAN active, as I alluded to earlier in this particular nugget. Here we can see that for our topology ID and name of zero, we have an active VLAN list of VLANs 10 through 30. So these are indeed our fabric path VLANs that are capable of moving traffic across the cloud. So another step that we need to be able to accomplish as we discussed is to verify the MAC address table. And as you can see, this is very similar to in an iOS environment. We say show MAC address hyphen table. And then here I'll specify the dynamic VLAN of VLAN number 10, for example. Now notice something very interesting here. Notice we have different output. In fact, notice there is an asterisk near each of these VLAN indications. This is a primary entry, it says. Here, look at these entries. Look at the format they're in. It's the format that we would expect. These are what we refer to as our local addresses from a fabric path infrastructure standpoint. Notice that these local addresses are indeed denoted by the attachment port. So local addresses are our classic Ethernet interfaces. Cool. Then we have these addresses right here. These are our Fabric Path remote entries. And notice they are in a different format. It's the switch ID, it's the sub switch ID, and it's the local ID. Remember we defined these earlier. We have our switch ID, the sub switch ID, which would be used in a virtual port channel plus environment, and then the local ID. We said that was another word for the port ID. So the remote MAC addresses that are shown here are attached behind the remote switch that has the ID number 200. The sub switch is zero because there's no virtual port channel plus bundle at the remote end. And then the remote interface has the local interface ID of 30. Remember, this identifies the exact source and destination port on a particular switch, and it simplifies forwarding by making an address lookup on the egress switch totally unnecessary. Now, there is routing going on here, as crazy as it is to say that at layer two. And how would we view the routing information that's being used in the Fabric Path cloud? Well, it's show Fabric Path ISIS route. This is actually one way to do it. Notice this is going to show the ISIS topology in a manner like this. It's the switch ID and then how you would get there. So for switch ID 30, we'd get there via the port channel 30 interface. Notice there's a metric of 20 associated with that particular destination. And of course, this would show load balancing. Here to get to switch ID 200, we can go and load balance across these equal cost paths. There's port channel 30, 40, 20, and 10 in this case, all with a metric of 40. 
Now, perhaps your deal is that you'd really like to see this Layer 2 routing table presented in a manner that's consistent with a typical Layer 3 routing table. Well, we have that option. Notice the command is slightly different. We're going to do Show Fabric Path Route. In fact, the command's a bit more straightforward than Show Fabric Path ISIS Route. So Show Fabric Path Route, it's going to show things in a much more consistent manner for us. Notice we have the particular destination and then the number of next hops to get there and then what those particular next hops would consist of. Notice we even have administrative distance, the age, the particular client protocol that is utilized to find the information all presented in this more familiar presentation. Now, of course, with virtual port channel pluses, we want to verify those by going to another device in the Fabric Path topology and verifying that we have our virtual switch ID and then the sub switch ID. So this verification is going to allow us to verify that virtual port channel bundle that's elsewhere in our particular topology. So in this micro nugget, we took a look at some of the more common things that can go wrong in a fabric path environment. And then perhaps most importantly, we examined commands that you can utilize in order to fully verify your fabric path infrastructure in the modern data center. I sure hope you'll consider joining me in the full data center unified fabric troubleshooting course here at CBT Nuggets. And I sure hope this micro nugget has been informative for you. And I'd like to thank you for viewing.